so excited because my special guest today is going to be Susan Needle of um, Exquisite E Yarns and Rovings. I want to make sure that I was saying the full the full title of her of her business. And I'm so excited because today in this episode of Fiberside Chats, we are going to be talking about her bunny rabbits. And I'm always a fan of people that have animals. It doesn't matter if it's like a sheep or a rabbit or a cat or whatever the case may be. So I hope that you will enjoy today's conversation. And for those of you that have never been part of the Fiberside Chats before, um, what's going to happen is I'm just going to ask Susan a couple of questions. We're going to have a conversation. And if you have any questions for her or for myself, feel free to put them in the comments. And then at the end, I will go through, I'll read all the comments. If you have any questions, I will relay them to her and we will make sure to answer them. And if you're watching this on the replay, feel free to go ahead and put the questions that you have in the comments as well. Just tag us and we'll come back and respond to them. Okay, so without further ado, thank you so much, um, Susan, for joining me today and welcome. Oh, happy Easter. <laughs> happy Easter to you too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, so thank you so much for, for, for joining me today. And I know that um, part of your, your business is your, your animal husbandry with the, with the rabbits. So can you tell us a little bit more about maybe like what kind of rabbits you have or what got you interested in having these rabbits to begin with? Well, for, firstly, I, I'm an animal lover. I brought everything home from newborn pigs that were in gutters and big pig raising facilities that they let die. I was bringing them home to this, you know, my parents' beautiful home. And they let me, I had a basement like quarantined off with little pens and I raised mice commercially. Like it's it's a it's a sickness and it's expensive sickness because my feed bill is crazy so uh we finally moved out to a farm and um i had always competed in uh, uh track and field events so then after my fourth or fifth knee surgery i went to showing the animals because i couldn't walk as fast as the people in track and field so that's how I got into raising them to compete. And then obviously, if you're going to have a fiber animal that you're showing, you have fiber. And for years, I was just giving it away. And people were like, why aren't you learning to spin? So taught myself to spin and uh, then decided on the fiber breed because there are different breeds of Angora rabbits, uh, giant, German, French, satin, English. So there's five, and there's maybe some sub ones that are not raised for wool, but are wool, such as fuzzy lop, um, lion head. There's a little bit of wool and Jersey woolies on them. So um, the husband tree is a big part because I love the animals. So I, I brought a couple of my little friends today to wish everybody a that's a really a little friend. Happy Easter. That's a very, very little friend. Oh, <laughs> oh their eyes aren't even open yet. There's a, no. so how old are these little guys? They were born on Thursday. Oh, wow. So we oh. have a little fawn and a black. Oh, they're adorable. And you, you can even see their toenails. I don't know if you can see them, but they Oh, cute. yes. Yeah. He's oh. like, he's like, <laughs> yeah. It looks like he's getting ready to do the wave. The thing is, I don't want them to pee on the computer. But okay, they're yeah, so, no, that's they're that's so fat because <laughs> it's a, a fat mother who has lots of milk and she only had three. So she's she's not suffering. <laughs> so we we raise them after um, 29 to 31 days pregnancy. Um, and all of them are pedigrees. So their parents have pedigrees. I have a program once I cross them. It goes into computer so they're all pedigree tattooed and we also show so once we have babies we raise them the best ones are kept uh possibly sold um there is a culling process which does not mean you have to kill them it means they're going out of your breeding so um you know some people do eat them that's just a fact of life that's you know they're cared for while they're alive once they're dead, they're food. If 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 that's how you feel about it, I you know, 
I, I don't tell people how to live, that's for sure. So um, <clears throat> we do the full cycle, breeding them, evaluating them, keeping the best, breeding the best, and, and cycle starts again. And on the other hand, it, it's like a crossover of circles. In the center, you're getting your fiber, uh, you know, blending, whatever. And that's like a separate section. So this is, this is one of my girls and she's, she's not groomed, but she's um, getting ready to go to a show uh, next month. I'm not taking her. Um, wow. But uh, somebody else is going to take her for me. So th this is the fur and this, it just comes off. People go, oh my gosh, it's hurting them. It's a renewable resource, um, just like a sheet. You're gonna shear it every spring or whenever they do it. I think it's spring before the heat. Um, you could do the same. This can be taken by plucking, combing, or it just picking up what falls out. So wow. that's, that's one of our girls. All right. Wow. So I'm, I'm curious because you said you got into the whole rabbit thing um, because of, of rescuing animals and you weren't a spinner and into fiber, you know, yet. So what was it about rabbits of all of the animals that kind of appealed to you or that, you know, you gravitated towards as, as that one, especially not being a fiber artist necessarily before, you know, and becoming a spinner after? Um, I think I enjoy the work. It's... Um, I bred standard poodles, which is combing, combing, brushing, combing, blowing, you know, straightening, you know. So I, I was doing that. But when I started with the rabbits, I was a teenager. I still lived at home. So it had to be something I could raise that wasn't horses or dogs. So I had to go smaller. And um, it's, it's very interesting. It's another world. So you know, you go to, you, you yourself would be going to book signings and stuff. But, um, showing them is just another way that you're, you're using your animal. So it's, it's just a piece of the puzzle. Um, lots of fiber artists do not show. You don't have to show. You can have a cross between two rabbits. If it's producing the wool you want, then that's, that's what you want. So um, we raise them and we raise them both for uh, wool and show. We don't raise for pets because rabbits are not pets. They scratch, um, they'll pee on you. Like they're just, they're just like, I have a couple pets that, that like me, but mostly they just, you know, go, okay, was my food there? What's, you know, I'm hearing rapping. What treat are we having today? Uh, they're not that bright. But it's still it's yeah, interesting. I mean, is that is that just the ones that produce fiber, like the Angora ones that are different maybe than the ones they sell, you know, as as a pet rabbit or are like, I mean, I don't really know much about the difference as far as like temperament and all of that between the one that have the fiber versus one that you might consider to be like a pet rabbit. Um, no, male rabbits have better temperaments, just like a lot of male animals, um, but their urine smells worse. <laughs> so across the board right yeah uh, uh, to rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> and if they use the toilet you might have no no <laughs> um yeah so it, it, it rabbits are not really pets no no just you know like a mouse maybe isn't a pet but if you have 50 and one likes you maybe the one is they're yeah, not yeah, yeah. they're not really pets I have ones that you call them and they look at you or Ones that'll growl, and if I yell their name, they stop. But mm, eh, I don't know. I don't know. It sounds kind of like my cats. Like I say their name, and they look at me, you know. And if I have food, they're like, "Maybe I'll come thing. hang out with you." But they see my husband. They go running. They want to hang out with him. So I don't know what it is, but yeah, some some animals are just drawn to, you know, they have their people, right? And you just yeah. can't you can't change who their people are. So. It, it's true because my husband, when he waters and feeds, he'll go, "I can't believe Lovely, she came at me again." And I open the door and she lays her head like, okay, scratch me. And I said, I, I don't know what you're doing to her, but this is her. <laughs> yeah. But um, I just wanted to show you a little bit about showing. I don't, 
we haven't shown now, obviously, we're still kind of in lockdown. We still haven't really been able to do anything yet. Um, government thing or whatever, I, I just don't know if they know, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I don't keep very many trophies just because they can clutter your house, but this is one from 85. So that, wow. So that uh, is just, you know, so you I kept that been, one. Been, been in the rabbitry game for a very long time. So um, you said you started as a teenager and then your friend was like, hey, how about you learn how to spin? So how long have you been spinning now? Uh, 36 years. Oh, wow. So you obviously have a lot of experience starting off with Angora. So are there any um, things maybe like as a spinner that you found really interesting in comparing what Angora fiber is like compared to something maybe more spinners are familiar, familiar with like wool, you know, so if never, if someone never um, really had a chance to spin Angora, what, what similarities maybe does it have to wool and what are some differences so that people could learn more about that? My mission is to have everybody in Wafa spin some angora <laughs> maybe swearing at it but no. um everyone <laughs> thinks that angora is very hard to spin because it's a, a short staple length um it's not a short staple length uh, i brought so it's not it's not a short fiber but it is i would say it's comparable to spinning silk so it's a little bit um, not shinier, it's a little bit slipperier, um, but you can do it very, very fine because you can have like four hairs and, to hold it together. Um, so this, this is just one that I took the rest of her coat off. So, and this is a short, I'm keeping this for myself, but that's like four inches. Oh, so you can't see yeah, it. We can't sorry. see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. No, you're good. You're good. So that's, that's what it is. And um, people say it doesn't have memory. I, I would have to challenge that because um, I have things that are old that I, in my first spinning, which was horrendous, chunky, thin, chunky kind of thing. Oh, and, and the difference. Okay, with wool, you still, even if it's a clean fleece, it usually has a little bit more grip and uh, maybe the um, maybe it has a, a little more crimping, but this is very highly crimped. Uh, okay, I'm just trying to spin in my fingers to show you how strong a few hairs are. Okay, so that mm -hmm. is Angora. Okay. Like it's. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you see the mark on my finger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And that's like five hairs. So yeah, well, I know um, from my own personal experience in, in spinning it, you know, I was really taken aback by how soft it was compared to, to wool. And I'm someone that doesn't necessarily have a wool allergy. You know, I know some people um, might might be allergic to Angora or, or wool, but I definitely find that when I spin wool and I and I wear wool, if it's not super wash, it's not that it's um, giving me like an allergic reaction, but I just have such a sensitivity to the, the weight and the density of, you know, hand spun um, wool yarn. It can be denser than if you buy commercial yarn and just like the, the way that it feels. But with, with the Angora, it's, it's almost like when you go to, um, for me anyway, like if you go to Target or like one of the, one of the stores that they have those like fuzzy blankets, you know, that, you know, that if you wash it, it's going to pill and it's going to go all hard, but when it's brand new, fresh, soft, squishy blanket, and you just kind of like need it like a, a cat, um, it just, it has that lovely squishiness to it that I have no problem having it next to my skin. So, um, I'm curious, like, cause I know there are some people that, that can be allergic to it. Do you know, if it's once the fiber is washed, do they still have that allergy? Like, is it to the actual fur itself? Or is it like sometimes with cats, it's more the dander or something else? Yeah, it would be, it would be the dander. So, okay. and also commercial Angora. So if, if you go, well, to Walmart, you can, you can buy an Angora, um, you know, a little Angora ball of yarn. So if, if people think that's hand spun, 
like it's a mistake. It, it should, first of all, they usually dye it and they usually commercially uh, spin it. So they have a bunch of shorts in there and the tips are breaking off because mm-hmm. it's been manhandled. Mm-hmm. So that sheds out. So it even bothers me if I wore a commercially spun made shirt, those little things, you'd be doing this because, yeah, or the dander. Or sometimes what you wash the yarns in. I just use Dawn and hot water, a couple washes, rinse, and then I throw it outside. Yeah, and it's great too because for the most part, it's not going to have the the lanolin or the grease that you have to wash it, you know, or scour it, and it's not going to have as much vegetable matter or dirt in it, right? I mean, your your bunny looked like super floofy. Like I just want to stick my hands. Yeah, I know. Squish it. Want to sleep to them is what you want to do. I just (laughs) noticed they're calling me Kevin on my picture. (laughs) <laughs> must be his computer um yeah so it, it angora is a harder maybe a little bit harder to spin but because i taught myself to spin that's what i taught myself on mm-hmm. not saying there wasn't a lot of my spinning wheel getting tossed what happened sorry that's, i was an angry spinner at the <laughs> now i would like to spin all the time anyways i'll just show you a couple th- more things so this this was a few years ago so that's just if you can see the little yeah. Angora. And then this was at, at Nationals. We got best of variety oh, wow. a few years ago. So I keep a couple things, but not, not hugely. You see? So I showed you the raw. Now this is this is what I just picked up from outside because it blew off my the hanger. But that's freshly washed and it isn't in a skein yet so well, that's, that's hand spun that's hand spun right yeah that's okay. hand spun that's now, do fine you, do you do fine you take the, the fiber and then send it off to a mill and have it processed into yarn or do you just sell it in the um or like do you just have it like in the the, the raw fiber form no no this is i have hand spun and i have uh, i have some mill spun natural colors and then i have blends uh, so this is what it looks like once it's been handled. So I keep this little this little ball around. It's a uh, 0.8 of an ounce, so it's not quite an ounce, but I call it an ounce. And you can see it's starting to get that halo. Yeah, because I've handled it. So, so yeah, is there a certain way that if someone wants that halo, because obviously that's um, like a natural characteristic of of the the fiber when you spin it to get that halo. So is there a certain way to treat it? to make it so that the the halo is kind of accentuated without it pilling? Uh, it it doesn't start doing this until you've handled it a lot. The, this skein is probably like five years old. So, okay. and I, just so I, people know that that's what it ends up looking like. That halo is, is what you're gonna get. This is how it starts, nothing. So when people say they can't spin because they can't see their, their um, their stitches, Angora is not furry. Only commercial is furry when you buy it because they've messed with it with machines and, and that. So they've done this, which mm-hmm. I do all the time, which is why this is hairy. So that's same color, actually the same yarn, two different ways. And then you were asking, so the raw, oh, there we go. <laughs> Is it backwards? We, we didn't get there yet. We didn't get there yet. Oh, we're not, sorry, we're, sorry, we're not sorry. backwards on yet. No, we're still we're still at the buddies though. No, but I'm I'm kind of curious though because um you're showing the the white fiber. So like, how many colors can these bunny rabbits come in? Oh boy, I should have brought like my standard. Rainbow? So, like dogs or cats or any pedigreed animal, they have a standard of perfection. And it lists the colors and what they have to be. So I guess I, you know what, I should have brought, should have brought a, a, a colored one that you could tell what the colors well, on. Well, if, if you want, um, if you have like pictures of the different color ones that you have, mm-hmm. you can always come back to this, like for the replay. And then in the comments, you can just post um, the pictures of, of all of the different colors, but pretty much right. so you're saying it can go all the way from like white to the, the browns and the, the taupe colors and, and then to, to black. Fawn, steels, agoutis. Oh yeah. 
yeah, yeah, great there's... ones. Yeah, I like, and you know what I love too about the the angora, especially like um, watching the videos of when they get their like coats on drying or whatever. Yeah, and it's like they take the, the 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 hair dryer and they like run it over the the rabbit, and then you can see these like beautiful almost Rings. like yeah like it's, yeah it's just a really beautiful like starburst yes. of the color of their of their fibers. So those are those are really cool. Yeah, yeah, we, we do that just to show people the coloring, but certain colors have to have those rings. So, so you saw the raw, and then this I've gotten done by a mill. So okay. this is a blend, 50% Angora. And I'm telling you, it, it spins up so nice, but I did that because people are intimidated by a fiber they haven't tried. I've, I've probably spun just about everything. Yeah, yeah, you name it. And things like linen, if someone says, Oh, oh, I've been trying to do some linen, don't even, don't discuss linen with me. It's see that's that's how I am about cashmere because I know there are certain fibers that you think, oh, that would be really interesting to try, you know. And yeah, of course, like try it. You know, that's that's the thing, right? That everyone's gonna have what they love and what they gravitate towards. And I just found that when I was spinning the the cashmere. It, it was like slippery, like it didn't have the crimp like you were saying that Angora did, but it was even shorter than Angora. So I really enjoyed spinning the Angora just because of how soft and fluffy it was and the halo and just there's something really magical about when you're spinning wool um, in the sense then, you know, you're you're feeling the twist kind of like turning the, yeah. the fiber into yarn. But I love the way that you can also kind of have like a part two with the Angora that after you work with it and you wash it and then you see it bloom, how it just takes on such a beautiful, um, different characteristic, you know, than, than how you started. So it's just really nice. I don't know, just to watch that that transition process. I think that's the part that that, that I really enjoy with the two. So when you said you yeah. blended it, is that blended with wool? Is there a certain wool that you like having Angora blended with? Well, you, you know, soft yarns, like I'm, I'm not a, a coarse, coarse uh, wool breed person. And that's just a preference. It's not mm -hmm. that I wouldn't spin it. It's just, it's, it's not me. Um, so I usually use Merino. So this is, um, this is 50 Angora, 40 Merino, natural Merino, and 10% Mugga Silk. Oh, wow. Yeah. Luxurious. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds, that's what I that's, said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you couldn't get much softer. And another thing that uh, people are always saying, you know, oh, I'm allergic to Angora. Well, you can be, you know, I'm allergic to short hair rabbits, if you can believe it, like the mini Rex. Oh, anyways. Um, they are, the wool itself is six times to eight times warmer than, than a sheep's wool. Wow. So people say, you know, oh, yeah, whatever is warmer. You're not going to get warmer than Angora. If you're knitting, I literally get hot hands. Like my husband will be under an electric blanket because I keep it cool because I'm a fat white girl. <laughs> and I'm at the age where it's hot all the time. Uh, anyways, um, when you're uh, spinning or knitting, your hands go hot. They go hot from it. And I can hardly wear, like I wear fingerless gloves in the winter because it, it, it's a hot fiber. It's great for elderly people. I mean, um, I've done uh, knee braces, not braces, but um, just to go over the, the knee mm -hmm. for um, heating up arthritis and stuff. Okay. Um, socks, like bath socks or what we call them couch socks. Uh, I wear a hat very rarely because, well, for one thing, <laughs> my hair gets worse <laughs> with it. So it's a, it, it's a firebird that uh, is very hot. So you can well, that, that's good to know because you know um like i'm i'm in rochester new york and it's it was there was snow on my porch yesterday morning and it was easter right so it's like we don't we don't have um warm weather it usually goes like like 30s 40s and then bam maybe we're like in the 60s for like a month and then we're back to snow so definitely having the warmer fibers is always um welcomed in these parts that's why i was hoping cashmere was going to be you know a fun thing to spin but you know it didn't it didn't work out that way so um, 
um, but that's that's really interesting about you know how it has you know different properties. But yeah. in in creating these blends, it does make it a little bit maybe less intimidating for people if they haven't actually had a chance to that's, to spin yeah. it. Yeah, that's with with row beans, and um, the mill did such a great job because I've had rovings that were not so much fun and and I'm lots of people like lumpy bumpies and I know like art yarn I've seen some of it and go oh my gosh that's stunning but on the other hand I'm a I like smooth <laughs> I like smooth yarn I like smooth just like surrey silk is not my bag I well I think it. you know when you're when you're creating yarns right I mean the idea of being able to make it a design yarn and have the characteristics or qualities of what you want is really important. And I think sometimes, you know, um, people will will spin something and they think that maybe it's not their skill or that, you know, there's something mechanically that they're not doing correctly. But if you're not starting off with like a well-prepared fiber, then, you know, you can have these like problems that you might think are okay. useful, especially if it's um, sticking and then you're spending more time holding that area and then pulling it apart you're just going to naturally get that thick and thin you know from gripping it not letting the twist go in right and yeah. so um understanding how the preparation really does yes. influence the outcome yeah so when and you that, when you have something like that like that's what you want to spin right and i tell people to even split it in half but yeah, definitely, definitely. No, that that definitely um, is is such an important characteristic. Because then I know there are people that will actually sell what are they called, like wool naps or something, so that it's basically like you're infusing pills into your you know your bats yeah. or whatever, and they look really cool. But the problem is, exactly. is that I've, I've seen beautiful. Like I look at those beautiful art bats, and then I think, oh my OCD would have some problems with those. Well, but it's, what, what's really challenging about it, yeah, <laughs> is that they're so short that there's nothing to really um, grab onto them. So like you almost have to wrap more wool on top of them to kind of sandwich them between the outside of the yarn and the underside, but just, you know, friction is going to make it pop off. So as a spinner too, it's, you know, also important to know what your end use is going to be. Obviously, if you don't want something that's going to have a halo, maybe, you know, Angora wouldn't be a great, you know, fit yeah. for it if it's going to get overhandled. But the idea that, you know, it's warmer and it does um, fluff up, especially to fill in the gaps in the holes, like in knitting right. or weaving, you know, it just makes it where there's all of these pockets of air. And obviously air, for those of you that don't know, is what causes the insulation property, right? To make it warmer as, as well. So I think that's, now um, I know with like alpaca, the actual strand of the, the fiber is, I think it's referred to as being like a metallated fiber. So there's a hollow core to it. So is that the same thing with Angora and that's why it's warmer? Um, I can't remember. There, there is satin angoras have uh, do, hollow, okay. but no, no, I, I don't, I, you know what? Now I feel I'm gonna have to look that up. Okay, I want to know why. Why is it warm? What is the quality of that? Yeah, because that, they're, they're, that's what it looks like spun with no halo again because okay. I haven't touched it. That's awesome. What, what else did I bring out here to show you? Oh, and then now. Now this is a lace. I don't know if you can see it. Mm -hmm. Yep. But see how it's all filled in? Mm -hmm. So you can mm -hmm. actually use less yarn and, because it fills in the holes. So mm -hmm. you, you don't want to do a big complicated lace pattern and it end up you know, a felted mess. Well, what's nice though, is that if you are a beginner knitter, beginner crocheter or beginner weaver and you drop a stitch or you make a mistake or whatever, it definitely will like make it so that you won't see those mistakes. So it's it's very forgiving in that way. <laughs> that's that's another thing, it is very forgiving. So spinning it besides um, not having the preparation. So with wool, and I totally get that people are in love with that. I'm not at the stage in my life that I want to take on a, a fleece and skirt it and clean it and possibly see bugs because I'm, I'm terrified of bugs. Then you okay. definitely don't want to work with certain silk preparations because I sure the, don't. Aside I from the cocoons, man, like there, there was a couple that like you, you hit something crunchy and you're like, what, what, it, what is that? Oh, no, 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 no. 
that is so not there's no crunch happen. there's no crunch with angora right we're, we're crunch free okay <laughs> well i i don't know i i did post the the other day a, a metal spike from one of my brushes i was plying angora <laughs> and i cut my own thumb and i oh, thought how did it get spun into a single to begin with like holy macker so um so there's there's not the preparation not that i don't think i would enjoy it i would but i just don't have time i don't have time i don't yeah, have I the mean, space it's it's you know it's interesting because like you're you're raising the animals so you're kind of putting in that front front loading of the the fiber care and and the preparation mm -hmm. there so as someone like myself that isn't a shepherd or doesn't have you know animals mm -hmm. sometimes being able to go from that beginning process is kind of fun you know just like some people yeah, like to yeah, garden yeah, yeah. and grow their vegetables and I, but i like to eat so i want to get i want to get to the good stuff you know don't, don't keep me in the garden i want to be at the table <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's how, so um the prep um it and I always say to people, they always go, oh, I want to get a couple fiber animals. No, you don't. You don't want fiber animals. You have two rabbits. You still have to every day go outside. And if, like mine, they get air conditioning in the winter and in the summer they get heat. Oh, the opposite, you mean? Because they're in a shed. It just oh. whatever the temperature is, that's what they get. Gotcha. So um, lots of people have them in uh, climate controls which is a lot easier. But again, if you have two rabbits, why wouldn't you just buy from somebody who's producing the fiber already? Because it already costs me more to produce a fiber than people are paying for raw fiber. That's just wow. the way. And I enjoy the husbandry and I enjoy having what I want. You know, like I want that color, so I have it in, in my shed. Yeah, so, no, I know it's, it's always been um really amazing anytime i've gone to in-person festivals and i see there you know people sometimes they'll be grooming the bunnies and i remember you know calling my husband up once like when i was at rhinebeck and i was like oh my goodness there's like the most adorable bunny you know i took a picture and then when i came home he's like where's the rabbit like that's how much like i loved it i was like wait i could actually bring home the rabbit but i'm yeah, like no, yeah, no, no. Yeah. i want to leave it to the professionals because i know that you know there's definitely a lot involved and, that's more and i do just, say that to people i don't yeah. i it, it's just like, um, you know, if you live in an apartment, you are not going to have two sheep on your balcony to produce some wool. And I, I just think rabbits are a lot of work. It, it's not like you can leave a round bale in a trough of water. They're, they're, you have them enclosed in a cage. They have to have you there. If the water runs out, you're topping it up in the winter, in the summer. In the winter, you're I have double sets of, of dishes. So the dishes all get put in one bucket and then the warm water gets put with clean water dishes. Who wants to do that for a lovely skein of yarn? No, you well, know how, what? How long, how long do these rabbits live for just like for their lifespan generally? Um, I would say normally about six, seven years. Okay, so it is a really long-term commitment. It's not just like a short, yeah. No, no, and they, they have to be fed special you know i say that um somebody that isn't good in husbandry is going to lose a lot the first while and trust me i learn something every week so these people it's going to take a while like i've had them i we've been showing them since 79 that's a long time but i had a rabbit die last week and I said to my husband, I said, oh, you know, she's not looking right. And he goes, oh, she's fine. I said, no, her food isn't touching. He goes, how do you know that? Because I, I leave free choice. I said, because it's full and her tree is on top. So she hasn't eaten. And then she just died. So oh, wool right. block probably. But, you know, it it's a little bit, it's a, less of a commitment as far as that. Yeah, well, but I mean, it's still it's still something that, you know, it is a living creature and, you know, obviously it requires of keeping maintenance, especially because with all of the fiber, you don't want it to get like tangled yeah. or get knots yeah. and all that like, stuff. Like you can't, they always are shedding a bit of hair. So they always usually go to the bathroom in the same corner. So in the winter, 
you have to make sure those you know 20 strands of hair don't sit in that corner because then you end up with an inch of poop in a corner so yeah, I, I just, mean it's not glamorous it's not yeah glamorous. I just like to go with the um a, a buzzer and just like go down my cat's butt so that I don't have to like worry about that just like everybody gets a clean, yeah. <laughs> clean shave once in a while <laughs> exactly and and rabbits have um have soft poop at night that they eat helps with digestion and everything yeah so <laughs> if they have five inch long coat and they do a circle with that sticky poop. Guess what? Yeah, that's you get to clean like the exactly. yeah, 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 glamorous. Yeah. It's only glamorous once it's in some beautiful article, and you go, "Oh my gosh, that came from a, a stinking rabbit." Yeah. Well, thank, thank, thank you for sharing the 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 pros and the cons. You know, so yeah. that you can hear the because no, I mean it is it is definitely a lot of work um to take care of animals, and you know I'm I'm so grateful as someone that is a, a spinner that there's all of these people that actually love the the animal husbandry part like yourself yes. and you know put the time and the care to not only physically like giving them the food and the water but like understanding you know how to get the best fiber so that it you know creates the best products that we can create and well, that's, and, that's and like that. everybody I, I don't know how many um how many people you've bought from from uh the wafa um group but you know I get some uh raw that I'm thinking like of uh, different breeds of shoot thinking oh that looks wonderful and then you feel it and it's like you know I couldn't wear this next to my skin and I you know I don't know well I think I think it depends you know because different um fibers like obviously have different you know end uses or whatever and so I never actually spun Suffolk before like for a full-on project and it's got a lot of crimp and bounce into it and so in researching for um this class that I put together on spinning for socks like I know Suffolk is something that comes up you know using down wools is something that comes up that's really good for socks and I was like okay let me like let me try it because it doesn't need to be treated to be machine washable so you can spin it where it's not super wash and it still has like that machine washable capability and it was so coarse on my hands that I really didn't enjoy spinning it and it was so coarse on my hands when I was knitting it but when I wore it my feet are fine in it they make the most durable socks yes so exactly. you know even if they make a wonderful product for what they're intended right like if you are spinning fiber for um you know making a rug or something that you really want to be durable obviously angora may not be the fiber to go if you want no, like you know no. exactly right so each each fiber has its own place for sure but also just sampling like you said and just trying and seeing you know what you like and i think that's one of the things that i love about the um the vendors in the group though is that they do offer you know those um little bits for us to try and i think that it can be challenging you know trying to go and touch things and feel things through the computer monitor so i'm always grateful whenever there's someone that's like here here's a little sample size you know to try so that yeah. you can get a taste of what it's like but also to get that education piece right like if you tell me that this is super soft but you don't tell me that there's going to be a halo i might be thinking that i'm doing something wrong and my yarn is like disintegrating yeah. right so yeah. just knowing you know what to expect from the fiber what it's good for all of those things i think really make it um a more enjoyable process when you're actually doing your sampling yeah yeah but there's just with angora it's a bit more costly obviously we're not going to produce pounds of of wool from a rabbit obviously and and just like like the sheep i look i look at those sheep pictures and i go oh i wish i was back on a farm but we've had jacob we used to raise jacob because they were a heritage breed um apparently been around since bible times so we had them i mean we had no idea what we were doing here we are you know trying to avoid a set of three horn three sets of horns on our ram so tying them up by the horns and me just shearing i'm like I just did crazy wild and crazy things and we also had pygoras and we had them at the very beginning when they were still crossing them to have a fleece that you could just comb or pull off so we've done that and we've you know because our life geared down to in the city I think they'd notice sheep. They haven't noticed the rabbit. <laughs> we have trees. I'm blowing under the trees and there's 
dust and hair and I'm thinking oh my gosh I hope the neighbors aren't having a barbecue because this would be bad <laughs> oh no oh no I would have thought, that probably would be a good wonder like all the fluff is coming from yeah I know like even just trying to work with it in the winter um with electric heat so for those of you that have never like tried it it's a really fun challenge to try to like work with with Angora like going up your nose and all of that so definitely the damp towel um technique or like getting I think someone said to even use um what was it like laundry softener like you know it's just that's something what like I have a water bottle yeah to make the static if, go down because that that stuff is just like whoo goes when everywhere I'm, when I'm plucking in the winter and and the uh the fake fireplace is on um I have a a dryer sheet that I just squick rub my hand across then do a few more and then <laughs> that's yeah. all you can do because it's it's going to get static that's just definitely definitely so now um a lot of what you have looks like it's undyed do you ever dye it or do you have any um oh, like yeah. suggestions or or ideas for people that like and grow with a little bit of color how to approach it i do i've dyed dyed it uh just i've dried clipped i've dyed uh over dyed i didn't leave it here i wonder why i didn't do that my husband is not but i I do enjoy the natural colors and I'll tell okay, I love sparkle, but with all the natural colors and gore comes in, I can say to a person in 20 years, your garment is still going to be that color. With dye, even though I'm, I'm anal, I'm, I'm so anal, you have no idea. <laughs> so you know, it, it has to be perfectly dyed and stuff. And sometimes you don't get it with chunks. So, you know, then I lie a little piece. Oh my gosh. So I, I've done all of that, but I, I feel more comfortable with the natural because I know that's what it's going to be, you know, 10 years. If I have something that bleeds, I chuck it out because I just, I can't, I can't deal with it. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I was just curious um, if you tried like using acid dyes with it or natural dyes or, you know, if there's um, a characteristic about Angora, maybe that's like, you know, to consider, you know, for example, like with silk, you don't want the temperature of the water to get too hot when you're dyeing it, right, because then it can affect the luster. So if there's anything to like consider maybe when applying dye to Angora that might be different than wool. Um, with Angora, there is more sit time in a vinegar bath. Okay. So, you know, people sometimes just give it a bath and done. Mm -hmm. I sometimes leave it two or three days with, with a um, plate on top of it, pushing it down in the vinegar water. Do I do an exact measurement of vinegar? No, it doesn't matter. I haven't found that that bothers it at all. I don't, I don't have breakage, which again, probably goes into good husbandry. Mm -hmm. What you feeding and how you care for them is going to denote how um, the wool is going to be. So, you know, if you have breaks in, in wool, there's something wrong. It wasn't fed, right? It was sick during a period. Just, just well, you, I've seen it with the sheep too, right? Somebody was showing how there was a, a break in the color just because it, I was not well, I think that time or before they yeah. bought them or whatever. No, I so, think, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. How that, that can happen. Yeah. So that's, that's what it's about. So I'm a fiber artist myself, definitely animal husbandry. I love it. You know, you have livestock, you have dead stock. You've probably heard it a billion times. True. I mean, I've had people come driving up from, you know, uh, Georgia, coming up to pick up a rabbit, obviously not last two years. And uh, they can't, they can't believe that I do so little and they look that good. And that it, you know, they're not babies, but you also have to care for them. So yeah. Yeah, so cool. so speaking speaking of animals because we're, we're we're almost done for today but speaking of animals and and rabbits so today's national holiday is part of the the um there you go you can you can go ahead and break out the box oh there's the babies no I oh. <laughs> gonna grab one of my little guys so yeah so so today's today's holiday is the the we're celebrating it on this fiber side chats is actually um national animal cracker day so I saw you went and you got your your box of animal crackers but did Apparently, you know that's what 
in the United States, we don't have rabbits as part of our animal crackers. Do you have it in Canada? Because I see that looks like um, President's Choice, right? Is that the yeah. President's Choice box? Uh, I see it. Do you guys have rabbits up there in your in your animal crackers? Um, I really no. These look like <laughs> tigers, hippopotamus, and they're zookies <laughs> because I had no idea. I, I the animal crackers I don't think are in existence anymore. Are they? Oh, I think I think they are in the states. I know we have different types of um, you know, like cookies and candies and things like that. There's some things that we can get here too, but How that's cute is that. That, that that's got to be on a cookie for sure <laughs> look at the ear hanging down i'm really really tired and it's cold and passed out oh that's so adorable isn't that cute and and they're born blind deaf and nude <laughs> so you can see he's starting to get his hair can't hear yet awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing the little babies with us. So I'm just going to go check into the Facebook group and see if there are any questions or comments. Um, definitely people are a fan of the babies. So thank you for, <laughs> for sharing and the big fluffy ones as well. Um, let's see here. Dora. Okay. Oh, so um, someone was asking how old the bunnies were. And in the beginning, Sue said that they were born on Thursday. So they're only a couple of days old. Yeah. Yeah. So their eyes will open. Uh, usually day 11. Okay. Okay. That's awesome. See little so, slits and then. And then since the, um, the babies are coming from the parents, like if you put two gray rabbits together, does that mean that like all the babies are going to be gray or do you sometimes because of genetics, like have these like random color and you don't know what you're going to get? Um, if I was genetically sound in my reading, I've bought the books. I've read the books. Again, certain things are just not passing this old brain. Um, people always laugh at me because, you know, they'll say, oh, is, is it, uh, have you bred it to be dominant, blah, blah, blah. Uh, no, I just like that one and I bred it to that one. So there's what we got. <laughs> so yeah. you do get wrong colors to show though. If, oh, okay. if you don't concentrate on, on what colors are showable, you will get non-showable colors. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, they still produce well. Thank you so much, Sue. I really appreciate your time today and sharing all of your knowledge about these bunny rabbits and the, the babies and the mamas and the whole the whole um, gamut. I really appreciate it. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today um, for this 10th episode of Fiverside Chat. So just so you know, next week, I'm going to be coming back um, to do an interview with Yohani, and it's going to be at 1.30 on Tuesday, so 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm really excited because while um, Yohani is part of the small beginning sheep farm um, business, right? It's like her parents have the, the sheep and she does like the tech stuff. So I'm really curious to hear more about that end of the fiber art, you know, industry and business and, and all of the types of careers and things like that, that it takes to keep a fiber business going. So before we close out, Sue, do you have any last words? Is there anything else you'd like to tell the Woolen Fiber Arts Group? Um Certainly go and look at a wool skating garment contest at a rabbit show. You no, know, it sounds crazy and you know there shouldn't be uh, the artists there, but I know I'm judging one in Michigan uh, this year. I'd have a date if I was uh, good at it, but I don't. Anyways, it's, the stuff made with it is stunning. Um, thank you, Lana, for having me. And if anybody has any bunny questions, I can probably answer them. Not that I'm a vet, but pretty well we've we've dealt with just about everything. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing your expertise and your knowledge and your time. So for everybody else, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and I will see you on the next Fiberside Chats. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.